All right, guys, welcome back to the 16th episode of Flippin' Friday. Shout out to all of you that watched the 15th episode. We actually got way more views than we normally do. So if this is your first Flippin' Friday episode, welcome. Today is actually a little bit different than normal. We don't have any sponsored parts. We don't have any crazy once in a lifetime deals, no disclaimers or anything. This is just some hard work. I got really good deals on all of these, but they're all repeatable. And I paid $709 for everything here. And most importantly, we're rocking the turbo cock. Let's start building. So I just want to highlight some of the deals before I actually start building. For the CPU, this is the Intel i5-10400, which I actually sniped off Mercari for just $90, which is really good. And I also bought a second one like two days later for $90, so the price of these is definitely coming down. For the motherboard, we have this MSI Z490A Pro. I paid $81 for this off of Amazon Warehouse. Not too hard to do for the RAM. This is a silicone power kit. I've been meaning to use this for a while because it only has the heat spreader on one side. There's just the PCB on the other side, but I paid $40 for this 16 gigabyte RAM kit. You absolutely love to see it. And then for the graphics card, we have the XFX Swix 210, the RX 6600. I paid $300 off of somebody in our Discord server for this. You can go to zaxtechdurf.com slash Discord, by the way. But yeah, we're starting off with some really good deals. But real quickly before we start building, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, Zach, I don't wanna see so many budget components. I wanna see the true baller stuff. I got you covered with today's sponsor, which is the Corsair 5000T case. I'm not kidding around when I say that this case is for the true ballers only because although it's rocking a $400 price tag, it's absolutely loaded up with the features. To start, there's 208 individually addressable RGB LEDs, which can be completely customized through Corsair's IQ software. The case comes with the Commander Core XT, which can connect even more RGB components and PWM fans. And speaking of which, there are three LL120 RGB fans that are pre-installed up at the front. I'm a huge fan of this super unique assault rifle barrel design up at the top with the diffused lighting. That looks so clean. And there's also a ton of storage options in the back for both 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch drives. And there's also a ton of USB ports up at the top as well. The Corsair 5000T comes in black or white options, as you can see here. And you can click that first link down in the description to learn more. But now let's get back to building my not so baller gaming PC. Starting with the Intel i5-10400, like I said, I originally just wanted this to be a very easy and repeatable 10100F or 10105F, but both of those CPUs can actually cause a potential slight CPU bottleneck paired with the RX 6600. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, uh, but I wanted to at least get an i5 for this build. So at the very last second, I was searching all over the place, Jawa, Mercari, eBay, and all that. I happened to stumble on this 10400. It was listed for like $120 or so, which is a normal used price. However, I decided to send a thoughtful message to them saying like I can't afford anything more and I really want the CPU. So I lowballed them at $90 and they accepted it almost right away. So don't be afraid to do that on Mercari because $90 is a really good price for the 10400. And now for our motherboard here, you definitely do not need to pair something like the 10400 with a usually expensive Z490 motherboard. However, with ATX size motherboards, they're way more expensive than micro ATX. So this was actually legitimately the cheapest ATX motherboard that I could get for any 10th or 11th gen Intel chip. So that's why I went with this one. $81 on Amazon is a really good deal for this high quality of a motherboard. So we just got the motherboard fully prepped and ready to go. And I want to quickly talk about this CPU cooler for today's color scheme, which is revolving around the red and black turbo cock. I just wanted everything inside to be all black. And usually us PC flippers are going with something like the ID Cooling 224 XT, but I wanted to just 
purely for science and for content, wanted to try something new. And this here is the Up Here S5 BK, which I don't know how long this has been on the market. It's new in my mind. It could have been here for a while. I just ne have never seen it before, but it costs 25 or $26. Overall, it's about as clean as it gets. It's all black. It's got five copper heat pipes on it. The installation was pretty, pretty smooth. And overall, I think I'm pretty happy with it. And if the 224 XT isn't on sale, then this one's actually cheaper. And Aside from performance, it looks like it's gonna be just as good. Next up, we have the case here, and this is none other than the Turbocock, and I am not lying when I say this is literally called the Turbocock. I can't believe it. Now, memes aside, I actually used this case on a Thirsty Thursday live stream last week, and to my humongous surprise, this was honestly the best, like not kidding, the best budget ATX case that I think I've ever touched before. So real quickly, I paid $68 for this full size ATX. There's four different colorways. This is the red and black. There's a white and black and two other ones. But where this PC truly shines is the cable management in the back doesn't make any sense for the price range. So this is what we're looking at. And there's three main things to look at here. So first up, we have what they're calling a motherboard fan. I have no idea if this actually keeps the VRMs cooler. Like it's blowing cold air against the PCB of the motherboard. No idea if that actually does anything, but it might. But the two more important things are we have this super, super beefy and deep cable management tray in here. This is where you can store like real thick cable bundles. If you want to throw a radiator in here or cable extensions, like we're about to do a ton of room for cable management here. And not only that, but they also took a little note from NZXT's playbook and they have the proper cable channels in here where you can just pop this off. And that way you can hide the cables going down that way. This is really good for the fans to be properly rounded down to the five port fan hub. This is both for fans and RGBs. So you're just getting a ton of value in here for just $68. I'm a really, really big fan of the Turbocock. Now, their whole marketing team, it, I, I don't know what happened. This makes zero sense whatsoever. This is a UK based company, so I'm not really sure how they could be like this tone deaf to make a product called the Turbocock. But not only that, but this is the case that the Turbocock comes in, ladies and gentlemen. And the brand is actually from Game Max. And you can see that this is the Contact and it features hardware anti fever. What the hell is even that? I have zero clue what that could possibly mean, but we don't have to worry about any fevers going on with the Turbocock. We got the Turbocock branding down here, the green pill guy. I have no idea what's going on with the Turbocock. All I know is it's a bang for your buck kind of case. One other thing that I completely forgot to mention was the Turbocock also, remember this is only $68, it comes with a GPU sag bracket in there. You never see that at this low of a price. I'm a big fan of the Turbocock, what can I say? Finally, we have the graphics card and I actually misspoke at the beginning of this video. This is still the XFX RX 6600, the Swift 210, but I did not buy this from a Discord member. I got it confused with an XT deal, but this I still only paid $300 for, but that's because these cards have been just going on sales down to $300. And honestly, like a week ago, I saw this exact model go for like $280 on Newegg or so. That is a unreal price to performance deal. Most of my audience already knows this at this point, but the 6600s really, really got slept on uh, just because a lot of people were interested in paying the premium 
for the RTX 3060s and whatnot, but the price performance on these is just ridiculous. So I did still pay 300 for it, like I said, but that was just on a very normal new egg sale. Uh, very, very good value on this one. And then before I put on this back panel, I just wanted to emphasize again how good the cable management is on this turbo cock. Now this is me not putting in a lot of effort at all. I literally used one single zip tie for this entire build. I don't have a ton of crazy fans in here or anything, so the cables uh, are pretty light for today's build. But regardless, this just looks so clean with the cable management channels over there. I definitely took advantage of the deeper bay in here for the 24 pin cable extensions. And then of course we have all the room underneath the PSU shroud to hide all of our cables. The Turbocock has amazing cable management, especially for only being $68. And there you have it. And here is the full parts list. And like I said, I paid $710 for everything here, but do keep in mind that I did get some pretty solid deals, but definitely repeatable deals on the CPU, motherboard, RAM, power supply, the kit. Well, honestly, pretty much everything was a good deal, but all of it is repeatable. Not a single deal here was crazy or anything, but this is indeed a very price to performance build. And this is what one would look like if you exercise some patience and really snipe the good deals. I don't think you'd have any problem selling a build like this for around $900 for a quick, almost $200 profit. And honestly, if you're patient, you might even be able to get a bit more for it as well with how dialed in these aesthetics are. And if you do want to see what the 10400 and RX 6600 are capable of, Sam, of course, has us covered with this quick 10 game benchmarking run and here are the results. Shouldn't be anything new for you at this point. We already know that the 6600 is an amazing card for 1080p and high to very high gaming and when paired with the 10th gen i5 chip you're going to get an amazing gaming and flipping experience. As always, this build will be sold over on my own website, zaxtector.com. This build will be for sale on the next website launch, which is August 1st, so be on the lookout for that. It's gonna be a massive launch, by the way, since we didn't do one on July 1st, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. And just like always, I hope you guys enjoyed this 16th episode of Flippin' Friday. Feel free to click the playlist that's on the screen now to make sure you get caught up on all the other episodes, but I'll catch you guys in the next video.